I am honored to be here today with MK Palmore, uh, Director in the Office of the CISO at Google Cloud. MK, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Simone. I appreciate the offer and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Sure. To kick things off right away, we'll get right into it. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your role at Google Cloud and what y- work you do with your clients and the industry in your capacity as a strategic advisor? Sure. So I belong to a team uh, at Google Cloud called the Office of the CISO, and we are essentially uh, a team of all former uh, security executives across the industry verticals. Uh, I think we will probably get into the conversation a bit, but I cover down on global public sector interest for the Office of the CISO. Uh, and our role in Google Cloud is uh, establishing stateful relationships with CISOs and CIOs and helping them on their cloud journey. Uh, always with a bent towards uh, security or cybersecurity. Wonderful. Um, so I know one of the reasons that we connected in the first place, and this is true both in your professional capacity at Google as well as some of the work you do outside, is around you know just the coordination and the work that organizations are focused on in increasing the pipeline of not only talent in cybersecurity, but specifically diverse talent. Um, How do you think about retaining talent um, within Google Cloud? So great question. Um, Talent retention is, I think, the same across any organization. And that is if you can provide good leadership, uh, if you can provide uh, your employees with a pathway towards their own professional development, and you can engage them in interesting work, uh, then likely you have the, um, the elements necessary to keep employees on board. Uh, Now, as quickly as I said that, though, you should recognize that I think any organization really has challenges with retention. It can be, especially in today's uh, environment with uh, things like remote work, uh, the variabilities involved in where you work, uh, what regions you're actually allowed to work uh, out of, and of course, uh, all things pay. But at the end of the day, I do believe that the subject of leadership, People oftentimes leave employers because of bad leadership, not because of bad situations at work or anything like that. And so if you can provide good leadership, you can provide them a a mission where they're uh, effectively engaged and a pathway for their own success, people will likely stay uh, where they are. But that, you know, easier said than done. Those challenges, I think, are felt across every enterprise on the planet. Yeah. And, you know, specific to that, because obviously we We want to retain the talent. It's so difficult to get it in the first place, but we also want to increase the diversity that we see in the field writ large. So how do you think about that as it comes to identifying and bringing in new talent and then trying to retain the talent as they move through their careers? Yeah. So anyone that's listened to me, uh, seen my uh, musings in terms of writings, uh, knows that this issue of increasing diversity in the cybersecurity workforce and pipeline is a real passion topic for me. I honestly believe that this is one of the core components of solving, if you will, the cybersecurity challenge. Um, Diversity helps us in every aspect of life. Uh, And in the cybersecurity realm, the need to diversify the cyber workforce answers uh, the mail on a couple of different issues. One, our ability to actually create and invent solutions that apply across the board. You know, here at Google, we're always trying to solve for global problems and cybersecurity happens to be one of them. When we think about solving problems, we think, how can we solve this for the planet? Not how can we solve it for some individual instance, although we do a pretty good job at that as well. Uh, How do we solve for uh, globally for a particular challenge? And when we think about issues like the cybersecurity workforce, Uh, We absolutely believe that diversity is a way for us to close down this gap, this ongoing gap uh, of here in the U.S., 750,000 plus open cybersecurity positions annually. Uh, If you include the numbers globally, that number um, ekes up, I think, to probably 1.5 million annually open positions. And in addition to widening sort of the, the lens that we use to identify cyber talent, As an industry, all of us have to do a much better job at getting diverse talent to the table. And that uh, that happens in a couple of different ways. Uh, We know for a fact that training uh, helps get individuals to the table. If you can provide them with training, some some of which, especially some of the best training in the world, can be truly expensive. If you're not already on board with uh, one of the global providers like the Googles of the world, where, you know, things like training may be covered by your employer, 
it can be extremely challenging for someone to actually get the certifications or academic training that they need in order to break into the cybersecurity field. But the second piece of that in terms of answering the challenge of the workforce is, of course, uh, the piece of actually getting people experience. And hopefully we can dive a little bit deeper into that challenge because I actually think that that's, that's really the critical piece that we're all challenged with, kind, uh, with trying to identify how we close that gap now because the, you know, Google has put um, training certifications on the table. We this year released the Grow with Google Cybersecurity Cert. Um, there are a number of certifications by other organizations and agencies out there that folks can um, can get access to. Uh, Grow with Google is certainly uh, you know one that we would promote that prepares people for entry level jobs. But there's lots of opportunities to train, and I think as an industry where we're really um, challenged is this area of actual getting work experience for these folks because the 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 truth of it is, is that cybersecurity companies, big vendors like Google and others um, are challenged with hiring brand new talent. Um, it, it's, it's really difficult for organizations that have as much on the line as they do, you know, to open up the, the employment doors for folks with little to no experience. And that's really the area, I think, as we move forward, that's the area where all organizations are going to have to start thinking about how do we solve that problem? Because that's the critical piece that we're missing now. Yeah, I would love to dive into that specifically, because, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about around here is on the we talk and focus on the shortcomings of developing individuals and not to say that it's a, you know, a misstep or that it's not going to help solve the problem to train or develop individuals. But when we think about, we, we talk a lot about how do we take a team-based approach? How do we think about what's effective to buy down risk to the organization? And how do we strategically think about the people that are required to fit in roles to, to ultimately kind of increase the security posture overall? And that's a difficult thing to do because we don't necessarily think about the industry that way today. Um, but what you recognize is, you know, we don't have the luxury to, without having people with experience, but the people with experience are limited. That talent pool is limited. So how do we solve that problem? How do, how do you think about that problem in the context of, you know, a large organization like Google that is probably more advantaged in taking some liberties, um, in that steps forward in that department than, you know, certainly smaller organizations. Yeah. Employers have to buy into the idea that they will train their employees. There's a famous saying out there, what would you do without, you know, like, what would you do without training them? Why would you want an untrained employee? And so employers have to get over this hump of, uh, I am going to have to invest training in a individual employee. We have to do it across the board uh, because this field is too dynamic. There are too many changes going on. There's too much, uh, I think, that we learn from month to month and year to year. Uh, as we continue to transform global enterprise, uh, cybersecurity is the number one topic. Uh, organizations want to transform. They want to develop. But guess what? They also want to figure out how to do it safely and securely. And that's where cybersecurity comes in. And so as an industry, we have to understand that we bring when we bring on board cybersecurity employees, experts or otherwise, you know, SME, and when I say SMEs, I mean everything from new entrants into the industry all the way up to folks that you may consider subject matter experts, uh, there's still a need to train and develop those individuals at whatever point they happen to be uh, along the lines of their matriculation or development. And the way that I think about it is employers need to understand that, guess what, you might make, you might have to invest time and effort training up these employees. They will be better producers for you in the long run if you invest that time there's certainly an argument to be made that by investing in employees that you're going to get more out of them in terms of longevity. Um, you know, people feel a certain loyalty to organizations that have invested uh, in them uh, where others might not. Uh, and so instead of looking at if I train this employee, they're going to move off and go work for someone else. Think about training them the benefits that you will get uh, from the time that they're with your organization and the amount of goodwill that you establish with the employee from making that investment with them. And then uh, if they do choose to move on to another organization, it is always with, uh, I am sure, a gratitude for having had the experience with an employer that has uh, taken the time to invest in them. And the industry, because of that, becomes better as long as we understand that, you know, there's very, 
very little situations now, I think, where uh, employees and employers uh, join forces. In other words, someone joins a workforce and says, hey, I'm going to be with this employer for the rest of my remaining professional days. That just doesn't happen um, uh, as much as it used to maybe two decades ago. You know, I certainly uh, spent nearly the, the entirety of my professional career uh, with uh, one organization being the U.S. government. But uh, the, the days of folks investing that kind of lifetime cycle with employers, I think, is um, is probably coming to a close. So we have to take advantage of the time periods that we are spending together, employer and employee, invest in one another. And I think that will ultimately yield better outcomes. Yeah, really great point. Um, one thing that I would be curious if you could share your perspectives as a, a leader in a, you know, a large organization is what are your recommendations when you think about that necessity to train and to invest in people? How do, we, how do you think about or what are the recommendations you have to evaluate and measure not only the team skills that are required for the business to achieve its security strategy, but then what are the pathways or what are the recommendations and how you prioritize those investments? if you're already going to make them, in order to align the need with the actual, you know, training you're going to send someone to. If you're going to make that investment, you want it to be related back to the business in some way. So there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, And I think that certainly in the curriculum realm, the cybersecurity curriculum realm, they're starting to understand this. I think that the, the certifications realm maybe has a better handle on this than, say, Uh, the traditional academic environments and say four-year colleges and that kind of thing, because they're still kind of training towards, um, uh, I won't call it an outdated model, but one that doesn't necessarily keep pace with all of the changes that are in the industry. And there are certainly shorter uh, return on investment, um, time and effort that you can make in terms of uh, investing in certifications, because the turnaround on those types of things uh, are quicker. You mentioned the term skills. And I think as an industry, we absolutely have to start thinking about what skills are needed in order to do the job and get better at the job. And that is where the concentration of investment and training needs to happen, as opposed to thinking about domain-specific overriding strategic knowledge. We need to start thinking about what does this person need in order to be excellent at this job so that they get what they need to get out of the experience and the organization gets uh, the kind of productivity that they're expecting you know, security operations, case in point, is a fantastic example of that. Um, you need to teach folks how to use and manipulate the tools of the SOC uh, in order for their productivity in the SOC to be, a, uh, to be good, to be positive, right? That doesn't necessarily require, um, you know, a four-year degree in cybersecurity in order to operate in a, in a SOC environment. There are training evolutions, certs, for instance, the Grow with Google cert was built essentially to prepare an individual for entry-level training in the SOC environment. There are other uh, certs out there on the market that do very similar things in regard to preparing folks for their first day on the job. Uh, And I think that as an industry, we need to start concentrating on what skills does this person need in order to be successful in that particular role. And that is how it is that you determine, okay, well, what do they need to be trained on? What additional things can I provide? Uh, to this individual so that they can be successful. Certainly as a team, I'll give you an example. Um, Internally, my team in the office of the CISO, we spend a fair amount of time in cycles just learning new product. Um, You know, there are hundreds of products, security or otherwise, at Google Cloud. There is no way that you can be an absolute expert on all of those products. There are a handful of individuals who even uh, could probably run down the list uh, and, and provide you at least level one, level two, Uh, on what those products do and what they're capable of. And so as an organization, the office of the CISO, we spend um, some of our cycles taking time aside and making sure that we get, you know, uh, deep dives on products that we think will come up in conversations with our customers as it relates to cybersecurity. And so we, we don't need to learn the entirety of the landscape, but we do need to be able to do deep dives on the products that are relevant to our uh, portion within the Google Cloud story, and oftentimes that revolves around the subject of security. So that's just one example uh, of you know very targeted training uh, that organizations can undertake to make sure that their workforce is prepared for their role. Right, and a great point because in your example, it is tied exactly to the objectives of why everyone's working within your office of the CISO at Google Cloud in the first place. So just being able to provide that pathway in that direction so that it has 
a direct impact on the business, you know, then you can start to actually calculate some kind of return on that investment. Um, with, you know, uh, shifting gears on you here for a second, um, on a personal level, I know you are also involved, um, with Cyversity, which is a nonprofit dedicated to increasing diversity and inclusion, um, across the cybersecurity profession. Um, full disclosure, we also have partnered and do work with Cyversity on a number of our training programs. Um, so a huge shout out to the organization. But for those who are either new or have not had a chance to get exposed to Cyversity, can you tell us a little bit about the organization, its mission, and some of the exciting things that you're working on? Absolutely. So let's uh, let's start with the mission. And then currently, I'm I'm on the board of directors for Cyversity. I'm also the vice president. Uh, I call it vice president of operations because it's really um, the uh, uh, both tactical and strategic things that the organization needs in order to keep moving. And I'm going to be assuming the role. Uh, of president of the organization at the end of this calendar year. So it takes me into a whole new light, um, you know, both a leadership challenge and it also represents the confluence of this area that I'm really passionate about in terms of bringing more women, people of color, and in our case, uh, the veterans community as well into the field of cybersecurity and technology widely. The organization's been around about a decade. Uh, the founders are still involved and moving forward uh, in 2024, it will actually be the first year that one of the founders uh, or, uh, you know, initial folks who started the organization won't be involved in the day-to-day -day, um, uh, tactical and strategic activities of the organization. So we're at, we're at really a new level um, uh, where doing things like simply providing network, uh, a network or ecosystem for folks to thrive in, uh, providing training, providing scholarship opportunities. These are all things that I think we've gotten to be really good at as an organization largely through partnerships. We partner with uh, we partner with every organization we need to in order to bring value to our members. And our members happen to be, uh, again, people from diverse populations who are starting at various levels in terms of their abilities uh, in cybersecurity. Everything from zero start all the way through folks who are mid-career and maybe making a switch. And then the senior level cadre folks like myself who view it as part of our responsibility, I think, to give back. Um, to the industry and to open doors for others. Um, I, I literally get up in the morning thinking about how I can bring more diverse people into the cybersecurity field. Uh, and Cyversity has been and will continue to be a way that I can make that investment in the industry uh, and community. And I'm super passionate about it. So we do all the, we do all the cool things like bringing scholarships, uh, giving uh, folks training, giving them access to things that they normally wouldn't have access to, uh, by virtue of membership in our organization. And again, we're constantly thinking about partnerships, but we're also trying to solve really those big problems. And the, and the big one that I mentioned already that we're trying to get our heads wrapped around as an organization is this challenge of actual work experience. Um, it, there's no shortage of folks that want to partner with us. We've partnered with SANS. We've partnered with CompTIA. We've partnered with... Um, uh, um, other organizations that provide critical cybersecurity training, and they do they do it really well. Uh, ISC Squared, I should mention too, a big partner of um, uh, of Cyversity. Uh, so getting folks access to that is is not is no longer the big challenge. Although there's always uh, the absence of corporate dollars that 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 you can um, uh, get through sponsorships. Um, you know. In terms of development, there's always a need to be out there fundraising and raising money and looking for corporate support. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, the big challenge that as we look forward, 2024 and beyond, how do we add to that? How do we bring this internship ability to actually get hands-on experience and SOC environments, ability to actually bring to the table and actually go into an interview, being able to say, Yes, not only do I have training in that, but I've got some hands-on experience, and here's how that experience will help your organization and why it might be important to, uh, you know, to think heavily about hiring me as an individual, right, as you go forth uh, and try and get these jobs. And that, that, that we're, we're looking for support and across industry partners to help us solve that particular aspect of it, the actual job experience part, uh, which is where I think the biggest gap is. And once we've been able to make a dent into that, I think that with government support, with corporate support, with foundation support, you will you will be able to see the impact that organizations like Cyversity can really have on transforming this particular challenge of the cybersecurity workforce. It will allow us to move 
in a much quicker fashion, getting folks from zero start to actual jobs in the industry. Um, and I'm proud of the work that we've been doing at Cybersity, but there is a lot more left to do. For those listening who maybe are just hearing about the, you know, Cybersity's mission and where you want to go now for the first time, what are some of the ways if they are in an organization or a corporate environment that maybe isn't necessarily working with you today, but how do they get involved? And, you know, to your point on dollars and fundraising and corporate support and internships, what are some of the things that you would love to, you know, see as a call to the action from those of us in the industry that are in a position to make some really powerful decisions in this arena? Yeah. So all of the above, everything that you just named. So cor- corporate support in terms of, uh, in terms of dollars, um, you know, nonprofits like us are constantly looking to partner with corp- uh, with corporate America. Uh, so that we can um, so that we can bring value directly to our members and corporations sponsor a number of things to include uh, the annual conference that we have uh, every year. This year's conference at the end of October uh, is being held in Orlando, Florida, uh, and then um, just national sponsorships that sponsor the training, um, uh, the uh, ability of Cybersity to deliver curriculum directly to um, directly to our members. And then that last piece, if there are sponsors out there or entities that believe they have um, a piece of the puzzle, because no entity can solve this wholly, but if there are entities out there that believe they have a piece of the puzzle in terms of wanting to potentially belong to a consortium of employers, where you can get those types of internships that actually result in the kinds of hands-on experience that's really lacking right now for new entrants into the field, We'd love to partner with organizations like that so that we can, again, close that gap in a much quicker fashion. Corporate sponsorships are always welcome. You know, Cyversity is a, um, uh, again, nonprofit, 501c3. We're on all of the giving platforms that are, you know, that are out there, Benevity and, uh, and others. Um, and uh, we live and thrive uh, through those sponsorships and dollars that we receive, and the vast majority, better than 70%. And in some cases, better than 75% of every dollar goes directly to our members as opposed to operational costs of the organization. Amazing. Well, MK, thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate you taking the time this afternoon. Absolutely. I appreciate the invite and enjoy the conversation. Thanks, Simone.